Hi there, welcome back to the Parkinson's Disease Education Podcast. In this episode, we're going to be diving into vitamin B6 toxicity. Now, on the surface, you may not really know what the connection is with Parkinson's disease, but I assure you there is a very important connection as vitamin B6, B12, and B9 tend to be relatively low or deficient in persons with Parkinson's disease. Sometimes these are vitamins that are supplemented And so B6 toxicity is a very specific condition that can happen with over supplementation of vitamin B6. We're going to be talking about what the role of B6 is in the neurological system and the entire body as a whole. We're going to dive into how much the recommended dose is and how much is considered to be a a, a dose that would put you at risk for toxicity. And we're also going to be going into signs and symptoms of toxicity how to recover from it if you are a victim of this issue, and beyond. And we're going to also talk about conditions that may predispose you to becoming toxic with B6 supplementation. So buckle up your seatbelt, don't go anywhere, and I'll see you on the other side of the intro. Welcome to the Parkinson's Disease Education Show, where we demystify the disease and empower you as the person with Parkinson's disease to reach your true potential. The content contained on this show is for informational purposes only and is not meant to be a replacement for information or advice that you receive from your in-person medical or therapy professionals. If you haven't already, I hope you'll consider subscribing. And for an even more personalized experience, please ask us about our memberships. Now, without further ado, let's start the show. So again, as I said in the intro, we're going to talk a little bit about B6's role in the body. So B6 is actually a very important B vitamin for the neurological system. Vitamin B6, or chemically known as pyridoxine, is really an important B vitamin for multiple reasons. So it can help, among other things, with amino acid metabolism, hemoglobin production, immune function. It can also help with gluconeogenesis or forming new glucose molecules in the body. And also it can help with glycogenolysis, which is the breaking down of glycogen that's stored in either the liver or muscle tissue. Most importantly for our topic of Parkinson's, it helps to synthesize certain neurotransmitters, among others, serotonin, dopamine, and GABA. B6 also plays a role in the health of the myelin sheath of nerve tissue. So if you're going to supplement B6, or even if you're just looking at B6 content from diet, because B6 is found naturally in food, your recommended dose for an adult 19 to 50 years old is 1.3 milligrams daily. In men or women greater than 50 years old, you wouldn't take any more than 1.7 milligrams. So there's a term that's important to consider called the tolerable upper intake level or the UL, and that is 100 milligrams per day for B6. Anything higher than that, you could be at risk for toxicity. Toxicity typically results from supplementation, not from intake with food, although there are exceptions to that. The typical cause of toxicity when it becomes a problem is chronic overdosing at at least 200 to 500 milligrams daily, and it could be for months or years in terms of period of time. Some individuals though are more sensitive and it can be as low as 50 milligrams per day. So supplementation in one way or the other is fairly risky. So basically the reason that B6 can become toxic is because in those excessively high doses, it can actually become neurotoxic. So it's toxic to the neuro tissue and it can specifically affect uh, affect the sensory uh, aspect of the neurological system. It can impair neuron function, and it can also antagonize GABA, meaning it can actually make the function of GABA not work as well. And GABA, as a neurotransmitter, is a down-regulating neurotransmitter, meaning it helps to slow things down or calm things down. So let's talk about what the signs and symptoms of B6 toxicity look like. On the surface, it may actually seem like some form of peripheral neuropathy. Basically, you can have symmetrical tingling, burning, or numbness in the hands and feet. You can also have loss of proprioception or your ability to feel your, like where your position is in space and uh, lack of vibration sensitivity, as well as sensory ataxia and unsteady gait. So ataxia is basically an uncoordination, inability to coordinate upper and lower body and, so, and, and steps and so forth. So um, it can really affect mobility and uh, overall sensation and it can be very unpleasant. 
less common symptoms, but the, also symptoms that can be found with B6 toxicity or overall fatigue, sensitive to light, um, headache, nausea, and in severe cases, more weakness overall of the motor system or muscular weakness. Now, typically diagnosis of B6 toxicity comes from obviously a history of taking higher doses um, and serum levels. So the active levels of the PLP, now the active form is called pyridoxal 5-phosphate or PLP. And typically they will find that those levels are excessively high, usually greater than 100 uh, nanograms per milliliter. Neurological examination and nerve conduction studies can also be evidence to support B6 toxicity over other causes. And obviously other causes need to be ruled out such as presence of diabetes, B12 deficiency, any abuse of alcohol, um, or any other form of autoimmune disease that might affect the peripheral nervous system and central nervous system, such as, for example, uh, autoimmune forms, uh, autoimmune conditions like chronic inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy or CIDP uh, or multiple sclerosis could also be, uh, could also have some similar symptoms to this. So one question you might be asking yourself is how in the world do you recover from this? Because is there damage that's permanently been done to my body? Is it even possible to get better? I guess the main answer to that is it depends on how long you were supplementing, how long you had the toxicity present in your in your system or I guess to result in the symptoms. So the number one way to recover though is to immediately stop supplementing the B6. The caveat here is recovery of neurological damage tends to take a lot of time. So some milder, more mild symptoms may recover faster, but it can still take several months. Now they may, those mild symptoms could recover fully. More severe symptoms could actually be permanent nerve damage. Supportive treatments for B6 toxicity recovery would be physical and or occupational therapy. Physical therapy particularly can help with the balance and coordination issues. And even if you don't return to normal sensation, you need comp compensatory strategies um, and to enhance your other balance systems to kind of support the entire system and improve balance and coordination. So for example, if you have complete loss of sensation in your feet, you may never have 100% balance again, but you can help the visual system and the inner ear system or the vestibular system to have enhanced reactions. Um, and that could overall help you to compensate. You can take B complex vitamins. Sometimes the B6 may need to be left out in that case, but a regular B complex shouldn't, shouldn't not result in toxicity. So this next section is a little bit more of a nice to know, but essentially, as I mentioned before, toxicity tends to result from supplementation, not from food. And evidence shows that's the case. There's no known toxicity from food-based B6. Although I wanted, in a moment, I wanna talk about a condition that could predispose you to toxicity. And we'll get to that in just a moment. Some individuals may be more genetically susceptible to toxicity when you're taking higher doses. Um, and also routine high dose supplementation without supervision is never recommended. So you definitely want to be under the care of a physician when trying to supplement B6 for any reason. Now, are there some forms that are safer than others? There's not really conclusive evidence to show one way or the other. There is some suggestion that methylated forms such as P5P may be less toxic, but the evidence is inconclusive that that's the case, as I mentioned. So PLP, um, and I've seen that on the, um, in the comment section before about uh, taking P5P versus PLP, which is the active form. Um, yeah, it can happen in either case, at, at least by anecdotal evidence. Okay, so one final note. There is a condition that can predispose you to toxicity, especially with B6, and that's if you have the mutation of the MTHFR gene, which is actually not as uncommon as you would think. So MTHFR stands for I have to read this or I'm not gonna remember the whole thing. <laughs> Methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase. So that is an enzyme that helps to convert folate, which is B9, into its active form or 5-MTHF. So if that gene is, is mutated, you have an inefficiency of converting folate into its active form. 
Also, it helps to convert homocysteine into methionine via methylation. So there's two main functions of that gene, or actually of that uh, of the enzyme rather. So if you have a mutation of that gene, you have problems with methylation, and that's actually important for detoxifying certain B vitamins, like we mentioned. And MTHFR gene mutation can make you more sensitive to imbalances in vitamin B, or certain B vitamins rather. And um, if they're synthetic or high doses of those vitamins, it's even more apparent that that's the case. So in other words, if you're supplementing B6 and you have this gene mutation, you're you're much more likely to see a problem um, than if you didn't have the, the mutation. In addition, the MTHFR gene mutation affects the metabolism of B6. So what could happen is you can accumulate inactive B6 or pyridoxine, and that can cause neurotoxicity because you're basically building up, you're not breaking it down properly, so you're building it up in the system. It can also affect the availability of B6 at the cellular level. Despite how much is in your bloodstream, it can have a problem of, of being able to be used by the cells. So some final notes on MTHFR mutation. Uh, you definitely want to avoid high dose pyridoxine supplements unless closely monitored by a physician. In general, you wanna be wary of vitamin B, uh, multiple B formulas or B complex vitamins. Um, and there's energy drinks that have high levels of B6 at times. So you wanna be really careful about that. Also, um, consider taking the active form of the P5P instead of pyridoxine. And um, monitor for signs of neuropathy, even under what would be considered typical supplementation levels. Considering that the risk of toxicity is there in the general population, as well as that specific case of MTHFRG mutation, it's really something that you should consider waiting to talk to a physician about if you're looking at supplementing any form of B vitamin, particularly B6. I certainly hope this was helpful information for you, and it may have caught you by surprise because I know at first when I, I learned this information, I didn't even know that something like this was possible. And back when I made the original episode about this that's since been taken down, um, I had originally talked about B6 being a potentially good supplement for people with Parkinson's disease, and then I learned about the potential of toxicity and had to make a follow-up because it's really important to understand the risk of taking supplements. <laughs> well, I'm going to wrap this episode up. Please leave your comments, especially if you've had experience with B6 toxicity and or recovery. It would be really helpful for others to hear about your experience. And until next time, be empowered. I'll see you in the next episode.